Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope everyone's doing well out there. Welcome to the new year. Yeah, this ought to be interesting. Another set of relief checks are going out. And uh, so let's see what uh, what it brings to us Americans, you know, out here in a good old USA. See what happens during tax time or something. You know, there's going to be, something's going to be up in the mix to where we're going to end up having to pay that back. We'll find out later. But anyways, here is my Chipson Les Paul Standard Gold Top. And basically it's complete. All the modifications that I've done with it, um, you know, I think it really looks, I kind of think it looks sharp. Um, the gold on the gold, the way it is with the black, uh, I really think it came out pretty good. Really didn't have to do too much, but put the P90s in it, uh, change out the knobs, wrote a new roller bridge, gold, uh, gold tuners, rovers. And change out the tailpiece, which I had some parts laying around. I could do that. Um, I am going to change out the nut on this thing. I did put a nut on here before uh, when I ended up first getting this guitar and putting doing the modifications I did with it, you know, the first time around. But uh, I am going to change out that nut. Uh, the nut is not a tusk nut, and uh, I've got a bunch of uh, shaped tux, tusk nut blanks coming which means they are curved on the top, but they are not slotted. And I ended up picking up a few other parts as well. So let's take a look at this thing a little bit. Now, I really kind of like the way this came out with the gold on gold on black. Um, yeah, came out really nice. Here's the headstock. Here is the back of the headstock. I got fingerprints all over it. So I ended up pulling out the tuners that were on here. Just had like a, I can't remember what they're called, but these are them right there. You know, the enclosed square bo box back, you know, whatever you want to call them. And put the Grovers on there, so I had to do some hole filling, and I had to do some uh, touch-up as far as color goes. Uh, I have a set of these stain markers, which... If you don't have any of these things, get some because they are they are great. And as you can see, I have different colors here for you know different types of uh, staining that I need to do. Basic colors, okay. This is for fixing uh, scratches in cabinets, um, tables, countertops, whatever has got a wood with a stain on it. You know that's what those are for. They work great. They work really really good. And you're able to put some type of a clear on top of them to where. Uh, the stain doesn't bleed through the clear dries with no problems you can even do a clear coat as far as like a lacquer on top of them because they're not oil based markers and i ended up picking up a few other things over here which some of it has shown up and a lot of it hasn't yet i'm still waiting for you know my kids plus i mailed out some christmas presents to a few friends and uh they haven't even gotten them yet they're kind of like stuck around their neighborhood and uh not even i don't know so first package number one that we have here a little bit of an unboxing unbagging whatever you want to call it i'm going to open this thing up this i saw online on ebay and i've ordered from these guys before um they do a lot of the long um levels for your neck that are slotted um so I kind of trust them because I've ordered from them before and the tools that I've ordered from them seem to be pretty nice. So this is what I got from these guys this time. Now I don't know if this guy makes these. Oh boy, it was on. Well, I don't think he makes these because they're shaped pretty interesting looking. Now what this is, did it come with any other paperwork inside of here? No. What this is, is basically what you would find on a... Uh, caliper and I don't know if he modified these or what he did with this or what but this floats and as you can see the numbers are changing as it floats and now it's set up for inches and what this is is a action height gauge so what you would do is you put this on top of your string push your string down set it to zero and let the string loose and it'll give you your action height gauge you can also use this at the first fret all right so let's try this out here to see how accurate this action height gauge really is so i'm gonna go ahead and put it at the 12th fret make sure your four legs are all touching the fretboard 
as you're doing this put it on top of the string which in this case it seems to sit nice nice on the fretboard if you have the high E string facing you all right so that's that make sure you're sitting down on all fours push down zero it out make sure you're not changing I'm at zero let it up 1.34 millimeters all right so 1.34 millimeters let's see what that is on here uh, 1.34 36 34 oh, a little bit too much yeah sensitive aren't we Let's see if I lock it in right there oh, it's not going to change so I got to back it just a little bit just a little bit 1.34 oh it would change back Stop changing back on me. Okay, I'm at 134 right there. Yeah, that's 134 without moving the string. So what is 134? So I've got, if I got my action here, so 134 is, sorry, upside down, 360 fourths is at 134. 16th is too high see that or not that's right on the money so yeah and I set this action on this thing pretty low for one thing so I think this thing is actually pretty accurate so if I go ahead and put this on here and look at my so you can see the line for a sixteenth but it's right on the 360 forts so yeah it is pretty accurate and it's going to be a very useful tool. All right, guys, take it easy. All right. So some more little toys I end up picking up. Uh, I put my razor blade back. A set of these fret files. All right. Now. I gave away a set of these. These are kind of expensive, all right? They're like 60 bucks, depending on who you buy them from. They can go up to, all the way up to like 80 bucks. I've seen them uh, as close as to 100. And uh, so I don't know what the hype is with these guys, but uh, I got myself a set. And I did give away a set of these to, um, I think it was Weedy Guitar Studios. He's got a set of these. And I started looking at the ones that I have and they're starting to get dull okay i'm not using them as far as just filing a nut goes so all the ones i have are actually getting a little bit dull so i got a new set of these these are nice because they're veed and they are also rounded on the bottom of it so you shouldn't have any problems now these are for tens every time i set up my guitar it doesn't matter if i'm putting nines or tens on it i always set the nut up for tens okay you could put nines on that and it's not going to cause a problem as far as uh you know string buzz or anything else goes uh getting that weird funky sound that sounds like a sitar i haven't had any problems like that so yeah that's my story i'm sticking to it um 